1941 and 42 in the desert in um, North Africa, the British were and Commonwealth forces were fighting uh, Germans and Italians the, um, in the middle of World War II. Um, General Montgomery was in charge of the forces there and famously won the Battle of El Alamein and subsequently the campaign in North Africa. When he used to visit the troops, if the troops who had, were, were those who had just arrived, he would turn up in his old scruffy desert gear, looking like someone who'd been there for a long time, and giving them the feel that what had actually occurred was that they were quite new and they had lots to learn about what was going on. But if he was visiting troops who'd been in the, in the desert for some considerable time, he used to wear his best parade uniform. The theory being that he would remind them that what was actually occurring was important, but there were more things to being soldiers than just being scruffy and fighting in the desert. Now, you're probably thinking, where is this idiot going? But, but the reason I've showed up dressed like this today, when today is normally our casual Friday, is to remind you that Drupal is now mainstream in the enterprise. People who wear suits know about Drupal. People who wear suits use it on their websites. It's a change from what we have had not too long ago. Today I'm going to talk to you about our use of Drupal and the GovCMS platform. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'll share with you some of our experiences, how we got to where we're going and where we might go in the future. The, I'm going to start with a bit of history around what it is that we've done and then I'll go on to discuss the other things that you can see on the slide. Now, for those of you keen to take pictures of the slides and everything, that's fine and I don't mind. Um, they're all Creative Commons licensed, but I'll be tweeting the link to the slides and you'll be able to download them and my brief speaking notes two or three minutes after I finish speaking. So there's no real need to do that if you don't want to. A little bit of history. In the late 2000s, um, finance... Uh, um, the, the business unit of finance called Legimo was involved in rebuilding australia.gov.au. And what we wanted to do then was include the My Account functionality that allowed people to log on um, in a quite uh, protected way to a government website and connect that website to their services that they wanted to get from various agencies. To do that, we had to build a really quite strong enterprise solution for our work. And when we started, we did so in the context of building something that most people would have built in, in that era, if you like. It sounds, sounds a long time ago when I speak about it like that. What we did was hired and outsourced a, bi a big multinational prime system integrator to build the site for us, and they built it in a proprietary content management solution, as you would expect. And really, at that stage, there wasn't a whole lot of choice um, for doing those things. It was important that we got a whole bunch of stuff right, and we thought that it would be the way to go. However, it was an expensive way of doing things. Hosting the solution was expensive. Running the solution was expensive. In fact, even building the solution was expensive and we did, had to go through quite a lot of work to get it built uh, eventually on time. And what we found at the end of that work was that we were stuck with a solution that was really hard to change. A lot of the stuff on the, on the website was hard-coded in, in a very inappropriate manner, as you know, we learned over time. We couldn't change things easily. Little things, like the change of names of um, organisations in government and, and people doing things, we know that that hardly ever changes. Um, those sorts of things could take months to do. And it really wasn't the sort of way we wanted to be involved in providing that website service going forward. However, there was, there was a change that made it different for us because we had an opportunity to do something differently. In sort of 2011, 2012, we started some work moving the My Account function to become what is now the MyGov function in DHS. Um, we'd 
we'd worked with DHS and other agencies, including health previously, to set up the personally controlled electronic health record connections through my account, connect a range of other services. But basically, it had got too big for us. And that doesn't, you know, I'm not at all concerned about that. Our role um, in finance in Ajimo had been to get things started and push stuff along. And I was quite relaxed about the fact that we were handing over what was a going concern to um, DHS to build what has become an even bigger and better supported arrangement now. Indeed, um, many of you, if you've done your tax online this year, um, and I know that many of you will have Macs, so this will have been the first opportunity to do that. Um, if you've done your tax online this year, and if you've gone through MyGov and used MyTax, you'll see a new way of doing that. That's been um, really quite an improvement. So they've done some great work over there. But it gave us the opportunity to do something different. It gave us the opportunity to move off a proprietary platform, to follow the government's policy about using open source and to go through and look at something else, some better way of doing it. Now, we'd had a bit of experience in using open source platforms to a certain extent previously because what we'd done in the GovSpace platform had been to build a WordPress offering that we ran you know, quite cheaply for agencies. I think today we've got about 40 sites up on it. We put one or two sites up a month and take down one or two sites a month because it's meant to be a dynamic way of consulting. But we were getting a lot of pressure from agencies, smaller agencies, who would say, look, we'd really like to put some more stuff up on GovSpace. We targeted GovSpace initially to be a Web 2.0, a Gov 2.0 platform. And we were doing a lot of work about saying, well, look, this is really, because you, you get caught up in the theology of these things, this is really a Gov2 platform. If you're just putting up a normal website, I'm sorry, you'll have to go somewhere else. Um, and the entrepreneur in me is saying, I could be charging those agencies for that if I just kept going. So we thought, let's look and expand a bit and see what else we can do. And we knew that we wanted a better way of supporting australia.gov.au and our other um, flagship websites that seemed to be driven by this use of the opportunity to get um, Drupal up. So we did a study to, get, to work out what was the best platform to use. Now, you can actually find this um, study on our, website, on our blog, the... the um, uh, CTO blog, if you um, were to type into your favourite search engine, see how I didn't say Google then? Um, if you type into your favourite search engine, um, finance, blog, CTO, uh, GovCMS or Drupal, you'll find the report pretty easily. Uh, and we went through a very, a, a very comprehensive study of the various options. We started with 30 or 40 options, we, down, we shortlisted down to 18, we got down to a further three of those um, solutions that we started to look at at the last minute, uh, well, at the last part of the analysis, because we really wanted to drive towards the best supportable solution. Now, at that stage, we were concentrating mainly on australia.gov.au. This is a site that gets about 2 million visitors a month, we hand off about 12% of those visitors with a pretty fast bounce rate out to MyGov now because they've come searching for that and we want to push them in the right direction. We do a fair bit of SEO on uh, australia.gov.au because we want to make sure that if you're searching for a visa application online in your favourite search engine, the first hit that you'll get is the visa application in immigration, not our site, so you have to click through to get to immigration. So we do a lot of work about that. But we still get lots and lots of visitors. Of those visitors, where is the first, as I said, you know, 10% or something click off to um, MyGov? The rest of that tail, so that, you know, the best part of what's that 1.8 um, million visitors a month, go to all sorts of things across the site. They look at public holidays in school holidays. They look at other sorts of services. There are users that I, th I think of as homework users because if you look at the sites they're looking for, they're clearly you know, primary school kids or high school kids. 
or having seen what my son does, perhaps university kids, um, downloading stuff from, Australia, from australia.gov.au to get background on Australia for various things. So we've got a lot of diverse users. And we wanted to find something that was sustainable for them, but could also support the sort of content up uploading that we have from our range of agencies, because a whole bunch of agencies put content up on australia.gov.au. So we did a, a, a careful look at that, and Drupal came out um, on top. Now, why did it come out on top? I, I think this is also worth um, considering. The first thing was there was a lot that you would get out of the box in terms of an extensive solution. There were lots of things we could do with Drupal. Now, we'd, we'd actually done some things with it before. There's a, a site called uh, Australia Gov Boards that we also put up in Drupal early that's about, um, allows you to look at people on boards and, and, and those sorts of things. We built that in Drupal and we discovered that because it was very much database um, driven, that, that we were sort of stretching Drupal a bit to, to use it for that purpose. Um, but back as a content management system, it was very strong. It was extendable, so we could, and is extendable, so we could add extra things to it as we started to explore what it is that we want. Now, as you'd appreciate, someone in my position, a dedicated centralist, um, wants to control things to a very large extent. What we want generally is standardised offerings so that people don't do a lot of customisation in certain circumstances because we know if we let them do a lot of customisation, and, and we tried this early on in WordSpace, what we discovered was that when we then started to upgrade versions, modules wouldn't work anymore and annoyed agencies would ring us up um, and say, the module's not working, this is terrible, what sort of service do you think you're running? And we would say, one that's open nine to five and costs you $4,000 a year, what did you expect? Um, <laughs> the, um, the, so we worked our way through that um, and decided, well, although we want some modular extensions of the platform, we need to be able to look at various things, we need to do it in a way that allows it to be upgradable, allows it to continue and work our way through it. Now, um, Drupal provided a large amount of utility for us in that regard. There's also, as you would well know, as evidenced here today, a lot of community support for Drupal. And that's important too, I think, in an open source platform. So we wanted to make sure that we had something that would do, meet that requirement. We also needed third party support because there's a lot of work that isn't gonna stay in agencies necessarily. You might want to work, work that you can um, contract people to do, that you can outsource, get some work done, a particular project, and to do that you need third party support. And although there were other smaller platforms in our study, as you'll see if you look at it, that were ma perhaps marginally better for our, requir our general requirements than Drupal, Drupal overwhelmed them in terms of third party support. And as I've said already, the modular nature of Drupal helped us considerably as well. We were also um, taken by the fact that we weren't the only government agency using Drupal as a way ahead or planning on doing that. Um, the flagship site, I think, for Drupal is, of course, whitehouse.gov, although whatever I do, I can't download those screensavers you used to see on West Wing. Um, the, but that level of support across the platform is really, really strong. Now, having adopted Drupal, we went through a, a range of work to do this. So in 2012, we started our work. We developed australia.gov.au in Drupal. We built it all up, moved it across to a hosted platform and got it all set up and working very nicely. I've, on my phone, I've still got pictures of the day we launched it, the spiking of their hits as things start to happen. It was very exciting for our team because they'd done all this work themselves because they were able to. It also started our work in agile project delivery because that's been a very important change for us and our very strong team in online services branch has learnt and gained a lot of experience as a consequence of, the, of this work. But you know, as most things occur in government, it wasn't enough um, to do that. We'd moved 
uh, Australia, we'd moved australia.gov.au and finance.gov.au onto the platform. But it was clear to me, following the success of, Gov, of um, GovSpace, that there was more we could do in this area. We also wanted to follow the government direction of putting open um, uh, public facing websites into the public cloud because our hosted solution with which we were you know remain quite happy still doesn't have some of the advantages of public cloud that the government wants us to use and indeed we are keen to use as a consequence so we decided to set up the gov cms or the government content management system offering now there's an awful lot on the web on our website about gov cms i think we got um, 63 comments on the post about this. Um, be because you're all disciples of Drupal, um, you won't be surprised to know that the heaviest number of comments we had on the post were from people who didn't think Drupal was a good idea and the arguments between them about that. I always joke to my colleagues that if you really want to get um, some discussion going on your blog, you only have to support Microsoft or indeed any single operating system and you'll fill up with comments immediately and get all sorts of hits. Um, there's a lot of discussion also on other websites, news sites, Delimiter and stuff like that and my presentation's got some links in, that, links in it that you'll be able to follow through if you're interested in doing that. But we were convinced that the GovCMS platform built on Drupal in the public cloud was going to deliver us an awful lot of savings for what are essentially three sorts of websites. We call them Pattern 1, Pattern 2 and Pattern 3 websites. Pattern 1 are very simple government websites. Pattern 2 are a bit more complex. Um, pattern 3, um, some of them are, are large, like australia.gov.au, but, but that's not a very complex site, relatively speaking. But there are others that have a lot more interaction. And of course, there are large agencies and, and things like um, the DHS offerings that that I'm, that, that I'm not targeting for GovCMS. It's going to be a um, voluntary thing. You won't have to use it, but we've got a lot of interest from agencies already. Our plan for GovCMS is to use it going forward um, from September this year. We um, are finishing our negotiations with the preferred tenderer at the moment. I anticipate being in contract signature pretty soon now. Um, a quick deployment of australia.gov.au and finance.gov.au in their current situations. Over the next three months, we're going to bring on some ex small exemplar agencies. We've already signed one of those up. Uh, that's, uh, that will work with us to do the templating work we need. We'll be following the new digital service standard that the government has us, has us working on so that we get a good a good way of adopting what it is we're doing and getting standard experiences across government. So we'll be putting that in place. We'll run those sites out and probably upgrade finance.gov.au using those templates eventually by the end of the calendar year. And early in the first quarter of next year, we'll have an offering from um, the GovCMS that all agencies will be able to use if they want. It's an exciting time, I think, to be working in this sort of area because we're seeing that the use of a very standard open source solution, the use of public cloud, is finally starting to commoditise the way that we do this IT. Now, when you look at a disruptive innovation, one of the things that you see, and think of cars. Cars were first started to be built in the sort of late um, 1800s. But it wasn't until the Model T Ford that you started to get disruption caused by the automobile. That was a different way of buying those cars, of producing those cars, of providing them to customers, standardising things and driving that work forward. The public cloud is doing that for us, pro pro powered by Drupal in the way that we do this work. And we're looking to see what I think will be quite a disruptive innovation in the way that we take this work um, through the next 12 months or so. Thanks very much for having me here today. I'm happy to take some questions as long as that suits the team. <laughs> Any takers? Okay. Oh, no, there is one. Yep. Um, you talked about that you're currently working with the preferred supplier for the current tender that's out. Did you say Because you were still confidential. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> after that point, um, how do you see things working with other vendors as such that you roll out with the 
So, so we're looking at a platform, a, a platform and hosting requirement, and then a vendor who will use a range of SMEs um, who will support agencies getting onto the platform. So there's, if you think about it, there's work to move your site, get the templates up, do those sorts of things, and that'll be done by a range of SMEs. Um, so they'll, they'll be able to, it, there's an interesting question about how much it might cost to move a standard website across, whether it requires an open approach to market because it'll be above 80,000 or not. Um, so we'll need to work some of those things through. Um, but yes, the, 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 the range of SMEs will have been worked through as a consequence of our work with the preferred tenderer. Uh, and, but there'll also be other options that other people can do. There's some, obviously there's some work required for, in terms of standardisation and making sure we're putting good quality stuff on, on the um, CMS, but we'll be able to work our way through that. Yeah? Um, what are your thoughts about the AWR portal and the way for the departments and So we're actually in very close um, discussion with our, our colleagues in the UK. I was only speaking to Liam Maxwell last weekend about some of the work that they do there. So we're quite closely connected. Um, there's, first of all, the, the gov.uk website is a very solid way of offering services. But remember, of course, we have that to an extent in the MyGov service already. So we have a transactional basis in MyGov that connects to digital services in a way that the UK didn't have at all when they started. In australia.gov.au, we've got a way of providing information centrally about Australia um, and linking to government websites in a way that's recognised by the OECD, by the OECD study as being um, overall the second in e-government in the world in 2014. Um, so we've got a good way of connecting through to those things already. But that said, when we launched the beta of australia.gov au in October or ish, um, you'll see a lot of work that, that you'll note is very similar to what um, we've shared with our colleagues in gov.uk and in, indeed the um, beta from um, gov.nz because we've, we're looking at the same sort of user experience focused um, information provision. Yeah. It's, I'm really excited by all of this. I wonder how the Australian Council of Government employees or public servants can start to perhaps participate more in the Drupal community um, in Australia now that sort of, you know, uh, Drupal is a, a common platform for standardising on. It would be great to have more collaboration and more participation. Can you see any pathways for that? Yeah, indeed. We've got some work on GovDex that you could do some of that um, in. Uh, if you um, sort of drop us an email at john.sheridan at finance.gov.au, I can have someone point you in the right direction there. But of course the, the strength of the Drupal community is that it isn't um, res restricted to public servants. It's a much broader community than that. Um, and there are heaps of ways to get in and I'm sure that there are many people here who would be able to discuss that much better than me. Yep. I saw in some of your uh, writings about getting to the WCS that you're very keen on contributing back to Drupal uh, in terms of code. Do you know how that, have you done contribute much already in this process and do you have any idea of what that might become? No, we haven't yet, but we do, an do anticipate that our particular work in providing um, templates for um, uh, the GovCMS work for the standardised templates on um, for, for Gov um, websites will be the major part of that contribution. We intend to make that quite open. We intend... Um, with, we talking with our preferred tenderer about how the work that they do, which you would normally think of in a standard contract as foreground IP, how that would become public on, on the various um, sites that people could download it. Okay, um, thanks very much um, for listening to me today. I look forward to um, seeing how the conference goes for the rest of the day and some exciting work in Drupal. Cheers.